In the 1980s in America, there was what people described as a satanic panic, and one of the cases that kicked it off was Ricky Casso. Welcome to Enter the Dark. Hello and welcome to Enter the Dark. I am Jan. With me as always is Les. How's it going, Les? All good, man. All good. Good, good, good. Right then, guys. So tonight we've got another one in the in the realms of the satanic panic, like at least partly. And there will be more of these coming because I got an excellent book off my wife called Satanic Panic. And it's got loads of good stuff in. And it's an interesting thing, so there'll be more coming up. Tonight's case is on Ricky Casso. But before we get started, we have got to give a shout out to our patrons, who are Hannah Blue Harrington, Amanda Champagne, Astoria Crowley, Amy Emmer and Jack Coleman, Sasha Johnson, Lisa Dempsey, Marie T. Jensen, Casey the Cannibal, Misty Day, Becky Louise, Izzy from the Clink, Jules Henderson, James Heddington, Mr. Crow, Richard Vecarelli, and Michelle Hudson. Yes, thank you all for supporting us on Patreon if you do want to help us out and you can help us get the episodes out quicker. You can do by going to www.patreon.com forward slash enter the dark and then you can just get all your stuff. You get free shit as well. You get stickers and t-shirts and mugs and stuff. So it's pretty cool. Check it out. And um, also, you don't have to just do that. You can just subscribe to us, like the videos and comment and share with all and sundry because YouTube hate us. So, tonight's case, Ricky Casso. Now, you've, you're slightly aware of this one, aren't you, Les? Slightly. Yeah, because this one was one of the ones with, uh, you know, he was into metal and shit. Let me set the scene for you, Les, okay? It's 1984, Northport, New York. And it's an idyllic suburb. You got you got that picture in your mind there, yeah? Like, um, off Halloween. Yeah, close your, close your eyes and just imagine so, it. So it's like that, but without yeah. Michael Myers. Yeah, it was an upper-middle-class, overwhelmingly white community on Long Island, and it was regarded as safe. And as far back as anyone could remember, there had only been five homicides there. So... Only five? Yeah, so most parents didn't think twice about leaving their kids while they went to work in the city. But like teens in suburbs across the country, Northport's teenagers resented the stifling conformity and utter lack of anything to do. Many of them turned to drugs as an escape. None so much as Ricky Casso. Besides being a school drug dealer, he was known for doing unbelievable amounts of LSD and PCP. Friends and acquaintances said he'd never seen him sober, and his epic appetite for hallucinogens earned him the nickname The Acid King. Cool I mean, name. It is, that's a cool nickname, isn't it? It's like, what's your name? He's the Acid King. You know what's bad? Like, the name is his name. You know when you just get, like, sort of flashbacks, like, like sort of previous knowledge about the stuff? It's like, Ricky Casso. Ricasso. That's, the, that's what the Spanish call a, a, a big, massive sword. Is it? Like a two-handed, like, sort of sword. Like, the Germans would call it as Weihander. Yeah, that means a, two-handed. Yeah, it means two-handed or, or, or something like that. Um, but, yeah, like the uh, Spanish call that kind of sword or a casso. Um, sorry, just come up and I was like, oh, that's interesting. Is there foreshadowing in this, maybe? <laughs> no. So, <laughs> no. no they're, they're, sorry to, like, sh- piss on your fire, but no. I do like how you're like, oh, that is quite interesting, it is actually. Quite, <laughs> it is quite interesting, yeah. Um, but it, he hadn't always been that way. Up until junior high, he had been a clean-cut kid. His mother was a teacher and his father was a school football coach. But around seventh grade, something began to change in him. That's when he first dropped acid. The next year, he got in trouble for the first time. This was for stealing some punch from the family's church. Stealing a bit of punch. They have punch at family church. You know, like when you go into like church fates and stuff, and like, oh, would you like some? We punch? don't have that in the UK. I've we never have jumble. Seen... You know, when you have weak squash at jumble. Yeah, 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 yeah. Basically, oh, like, like that sort of punch. So we're not talking about like, oh, they spike the punch. Yeah, that's punch, but you know, spiking it is like that's what they do in the high school high school films. Because they want to drink alcoholic drinks. See, like, again, coming back to the Spanish thing, it's like, um, I remember, like, uh, my parents and my nan and granddad, and it was, like, quite a big family. They always used to go to, like, Spain, like, on holiday. And every and you knew when they'd gone, because they'd all come back and throw a big party and sangria. And I was just like, because of, like, what you see on films, like, like, American films, I'm like, Oh, sangria must be 
punch then. You but it's not sangria is what happens when you spike the punch, basically, isn't it? You should just get wasted. Yeah, and I was only like ten. So yay. He says this as he's now raising a Budweiser to his lips. He's like, My mum and dad made me drink. <laughs> but Casso's behaviour did go downhill from there and he quickly spiralled into addiction. His family enrolled him in a community drug programme, but he would just skip it. He's like, I'm fucking getting to this. <laughs> Later news. I, I'm a nonconformist. Later he would have him committed to a psychiatric facility, but he didn't stick that either. They ended up kicking him out of the house as he was when he was a young teenager, leaving him to sleep in the nearby Aztakia woods or in other people's garages. Good parenting. Nice parenting there, yeah. So Casso soon lost interest in school and he dropped out when he was 16. But before he left school, one thing did pique his interest. The occult and Satanism. Of course it did. Yeah, so he found some books on the topics in the library and his interest grew from there. He began carrying around the Satanic Bible and randomly saying, Hail Satan. He's so edgy. So edgy. It's like... It always makes me laugh about that, that like th- this is the most occult and dark book ever. What the Satanic Bible is, uh, there's actually some good ideas, and it's quite nice. Yeah, it's not. It's not a dark book. I mean, though, well, when like I was thirteen, fourteen, and we go to oh, it definitely felt oh, edgy. Oh yeah, because like, we go into Fantasy World. You go upstairs, and they'd have all the like books and stuff, and then you'd be like, oh, "Look, it's the Satanic Bible," and I was always like, "Oh." I might get the Satanic Bible. Wouldn't it be fun? Wouldn't like, it be ooh, fun? You know, and then you'd be like, oh, I've got a Satanic Bible. I do that now, like when I'm in Waterstones, but it's not the Satanic Bible, it's Mein Kampf. Um, I, just stand, I just stand there looking <laughs> at all the true crime going, read it, read it, read it, read it, read it. Don't want to read it, read it, and just the flat hand. Like, like, yeah, it's so but the gir- like the girls in Waterstones are dead nice. They're like, hey, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, you. Yeah. We all so love- we got a good Waterstones as well. We have, yeah, yeah, we all love books. I like it in there because they just fucking love books, and I'm like, I love books. And then we just talk, and they don't judge me for having a Kindle. They're like, oh no, no, Kindles are really good because you can fit loads of books on. I'm like, yeah. So with him not being in school anymore and not being in his parents, he was free to indulge his drug appetites. He began doing even more LSD. For some reason, he called mescaline, and I don't know why. Is there, like, something to do with the... I don't know. I think he just was like, oh, yeah, I'm taking mescaline. But he took PCP as well. Now, friends and classmates said he would do about 40 tabs of acid a day along with PCP, cannabis, and whatever other drugs he could get his hands on. So he's fucking seriously into it. Yeah, he likes his narcotics, doesn't he? Yeah, so Casso, like a lot of his friends, was a big fan of heavy metal bands like ACDC, Black Sabbath, and Judas Priest. Particularly in the 80s, metal bands' music and album covers had sort of dark, satanic aesthetics to them sometimes. What, those bands? I mean, Black Sabbath, I get... Priest, no, no. Have you seen? Have you I've seen, seen the fucking album cover to Painkiller? Luke, it's a, it's a, you cannot say anything bad about I Rob like Halford. Judas, Do you know why? I like Judas Because Rob Halford made men in the 1980s think dressing up like a gay biker was macho, all while being gay and not telling people. He wasn't a gay biker, actually. Who was he? It was a, it was a gay Nazi. Oh, yeah. That it was from a, por- a porn film he saw about like gay Nazis, and all and the while went, speaking, we beat like this. Yeah, He's no, like, I love Rob Alford to bits. Like, don't get me wrong. Why don't you marry him? Fucking marry him. Although, although, like, unlike with Iron Maiden when they went through that horrible like era with Blaze Bailey, <sighs> the Ripper Owens from is it Ice Earth? Yeah. Um, the Ripper Owens era of Judas Priest isn't that bad. It's like um, when um, Sabbath, when they did um, like Heaven and Hell, like with Dio. Yeah, that's the. Do you know how many like actual singers like Black Sabbath have like had loads. Like, like loads? Well, it's not I, just because people are like, do you like the Aussie era or do you like the Dio era? It's Dio. like well, there was a. It's like I prefer Dio because it was like a different. Yes, yeah, but I like Dio. I do, I do like the Aussie era because like that song like what what is that song called where it just sounds like pure fucking misery changes <laughs> when he did it with Kelly oh that was Aussie <laughs> Osborne but no but no the Sabbath song what the fuck was that called no Sab- um, changes was from Black Sabbath four was it yeah 
Oh, for fuck's sake, how's Tony Iommi let that through, slip through the net? Mm. Anyway, we're not a music channel. Anyway, Even though, like, Les clearly would talk about metal. Let me just get back to this, anyway. Yeah. So, right. yeah. But none of them actually worship the devil. Like, of course they do. No. It was just an affectation, an aesthetic. Would, well, you, you got know. the thing with Judas Priest, didn't you, where it's like um, they they got fucked because they rec- because you had them two kids who were listening to the record backwards. Oh yeah, and then one of them like shot himself. And yeah, tried, because because yeah. apparently backwards it said do it. Yeah, until they took him in, and who did they put on? They put on Queen. And it was another one bites the dust. And when you play another one bites the dust backwards, the actual lyrics sound like I asked for a peppermint. I asked her to give me one. Yeah, that's when the judge fucking threw it out. Just court, threw right? it right out. Yeah, but yeah, um, it was more designed to piss off fundamentalist Christians and moralizers than anything else, yeah. really. Is this the age of the PMRC? I'm guessing. Yeah, it's just typical and everything coming into it. So most metal fans knew this. And they were in on the joke. They'd be just like, yeah, we know this shit. But Casso, with his brain fed on fucking Canadian Beast Skies, as clinically stunning amounts of hallucinogens, seemed to think the whole thing was real and he took it way too seriously. He liked to trip in the local ceremony where he told friends he was trying to commune with Satan. Right, okay, cool. But other than chanting Satan's name, no one recalls him participating in any rituals whatsoever or doing any alms to animals or people. Because Satanists don't do that. Exactly. But more troubling than his obsession with Satanism was his apparent mental illness. His parents and friends said he frequently made comments and jokes about killing himself and said death is the ultimate trip. It was for these suicidal tendencies that his parents said he committed to the former Amityville Asylum. But he just refused to cooperate with any treatment, so they kicked him out. Now, most of Northport's teams just saw him as a weird burnout kid. And you only hang out with him to buy drugs. And he just acted crazier than he actually was. But he did have a few actual friends, including Jimmy Traiano, Albert Quinones, and Gary Lowers. They helped Caso dig when he decided he wanted to get a skull from an old revolutionary era cemetery. Some said he wanted to use it in a satanic ritual being held at the old Amityville Horror House. Others said he wanted to sell it for drug money. Either way, he was later caught with a human skull in hand and he was arrested. Was that a confederate or a uh, unionist? Um, it's in New York, so it'll be unionist. Yeah, that'll be unionist. Yeah. Yeah. So a year after the grave robbing incident, Caso, who had been homeless for some time, came down with pneumonia. While he was in a hospital, his mother tried to have him committed to another psychiatric facility. But Caso, in his words, bullshitted the counsellor sent to evaluate him, denying having suicidal thoughts or worshipping Satan. The counsellor determined that Caso was antisocial but wasn't a danger to anyone, so therefore couldn't be involuntary committed. Caso recovered and went right back to his dirtbag lifestyle. One night he passed out at a party and while he was out, Lowers took ten bags of angel dust from his jacket. Oh. When Caso woke up, he realised that he'd been robbed and he was absolutely fucking livid. Now, Lowers confessed immediately and returned five of the bags. But since he'd already smoked or given away the rest, he promised Caso he'd pay for them. So, because he was broke, Lowers had to make a payment plan for the $50 that he owed Caso. Caso stayed mad at him, frequently berated him, and on one more worn occasion, beat him up. But by mid-June, Lowers finally paid Caso off. S- Things seemed to be patched up between them, according to everyone who knew the two boys. On June the 19th, 1984, Caso, Quinones and Traiano invited Lowers to go to the woods to get high and hang out. At first, Lowers didn't really want to go, but Caso offered to buy jelly donuts for everyone, and that persuaded him. It's like, come, come on, I'm going to take acid, PCP, angel dust, smoke some weed, go drink some beer, do some Satan shit. Mm, Don't want to. Jelly donuts, I'm out there. Easily bought. Yes, yeah. So, the four, along with some other hangers-on, found a spot in the woods to make a bonfire. But they had a hard time getting the wet wood to burn, so Lowers took off his socks to burn, and then cut off the sleeves of his jacket to burn them too. Yeah. Thus the birth of the sleeveless jean jackets. <laughs> so, they did what they normally did there, a lot of drugs. Four of them had taken a total of 40 tabs of LSD and smoked 17 bags of PCP. Fucking hell. That's a lot. Yeah. As the night wore on, the rest of the hangers-on drifted away, leaving the four of them alone. Now, we might not know exactly what happened next, 
But what we do know is at one point Casso and Troiano began beating and kicking Lowers. Then Casso took out his knife, began stabbing Lowers, screaming, Say you love Satan, repeatedly. Quinones would later testify that Troiano held Lowers down while Casso stabbed him, which Troiano denies. Troiano helps, admits to helping Casso drag Lauer's body away deeper into the woods and covering it with some brush. But Lauer's suddenly sat up and Casso freaked out. Casso said he stabbed him multiple times in the face until Lauer's was finally, truly dead. That must freak you out, though. Yeah, yeah. You're on all that fucking acid and shit. I mean, did he actually sit up, though? If you've taken that much acid and that much PCP. Surely adrenaline could kick in at that point. Like, and being on PCP. Yeah. Fucking superhero, aren't you? But anyway, afterwards, Casso and Troiano th- threw the knife off a bridge, and the three of them said, we're never going to talk about this to anyone. But Casso couldn't hold up his end of the bargain. He told all of his friends what he'd done, not to express remorse, but to brag about it, laughing. Most of them didn't believe him, because the story was too gruesome to be real. So he decided to prove it, and over the course of the next few days, he took several friends, anywhere from a dozen to twenty at a time, to Lauer's decomposing remains in order to brag about what he'd done. Shockingly, not one of the sightseers told the police or even a parent. However, one girl did tell Casso that he should at least cover the remains up. Two weeks went by after Lauer's murder, but his parents had done little more than ask a few of his friends where he was. Lowers often ran away, so his parents just assumed that he'd done so again and never filed a missing persons report. Fucking parents in the yeah, 80s, man. Yeah. Meanwhile, the smell of the, his decomposing remains was becoming overwhelming, even outside of the woods. So Casso and Troiano decided they needed to bury him. They dug a shallow grave next to where he lay, then pushed him into it. Because he was so decomposed, his skull fell off when they were moving his remains, which Casso found very, very amusing. I mean, you would, wouldn't you? If you're pulling a body, it's like, oh, look, he's lost his head. (laughs) But Casso and Triano figured they'd gotten away with the murder, and now that Lowers was buried, they probably wouldn't ever be caught. They began making plans for the future, and they decided to hitchhike to California, where they could support themselves selling drugs and start a new life. It's quite romantic, really, isn't it? Yeah, it's beautiful. But just after they left, someone heard about how Casso had confessed to murdering Lowers and would take people out to the woods to gawk at the remains. This anonymous someone called the police. At first, the police blew the caller off, because it's the police. Yeah. There had been no missing person report on Lowers, and there was no crime to investigate. But, perhaps tipped off by the overwhelming smell emanating from the Aztecia woods, they did eventually follow up on it. Using cadaver dogs, police discovered Lauer's remains, buried in a shallow grave on the 4th of July. An autopsy would show that he died from dozens of stab wounds to his back and face, particularly around his left eye. Meanwhile, Casso and Troiano had made it to Chicago, but they lost their interest in their plan to go to California. They missed their friends so much, they decided to sell some drugs and use the proceeds to buy a cheap car and drove back to Northport. When they got back to Northport, they still didn't know that the police had been tipped off. They partied with their friends, and when the party was over, crashed out in their car. But someone reported the car as a suspicious vehicle to the police. The first responding officer saw Casso and Troiano sleeping inside, and knew immediately who they were. He called for backup. The two woke up to 18 officers surrounding them with their guns drawn. Oof. Yeah, especially if you're on a come down, that's going to fucking hurt. So the images of a handcuffed, wild-eyed Casso wearing an ACDC shirt quickly spread across the country. Police also arrested Quinones, who quickly made a deal, immunity from prosecution in exchange for his testimony. Based on his testimony, both Casso and Troiano were charged with the murder of Lowers. While at first he denied it under questioning, Casso confessed. He never gave a reason for why he killed Lowers. But he did say that while stabbing him, he was shouting satanic stuff. Quinona said that Casso yelled at Lauer's Say You Love Satan, a line which would be repeated endlessly in newsprint, glossy magazines and television screens. Of course. But Casso would never face trial. The day after his arrest on July the 7th, 1984, he hung himself in his cell. By now, the police had gotten wind of Casso's supposed satanism, mostly thanks to a police press list stating he belonged to a satanic cult and performed satanic rituals. I mean, that'd do it. Yeah. Releasing a press release. In 1984, the satanic panic was just getting into high gear, and the Casso case was just the kind of red meat that he loved to feed on. Casso and his accomplices were everything the moralising reactionaries warned us about. They were druggies, satanists. They listened to heavy metal. 
The media circus went on for months, inspiring numerous talk show hosts and TV specials, including 2020 and Geraldo Rivera. His 1988 primetime special, Devil Worship, Exposing Satan's Underground, featured the Casso case. It was just the kind of serious, fair-minded journalism you'd expect from Geraldo in the 80s. Now, you can imagine what that's like. Mm-hmm. It's on YouTube if you want to watch it. They had Ozzy Osbourne on there. And Ozzy was just like, I don't know, I don't know I'm what I'm here. I'm not an authority he's on like, this. Yeah, he's like, I don't know anything about Satanism. I just ring, sing rock and roll songs. <laughs> they had um, Sansa LaVey on there, didn't they? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they had some high priests of the Church of Satan. Then they just had morally objective. Was it, was it um, her um, father? I think so, yeah. Anyway, with Quinones immune and Casso dead, Troiano was now the only member of the trio who was going to face trial. The only evidence the prosecution had was Quinones' testimony. Both Quinones and Troiano admitted to having taken at least 10 tabs of acid and having smoked multiple bags of angel dust. Neither of their testimonies could be believed. The stab wounds in Lauer's back could indicate that he'd been held down, as Quinones claimed, but it could also indicate that Lauer's has passed out when Casso attacked him. Without any concrete evidence, Tying Troiano to the actual murder, he was found not guilty. Now, while the satanic panic was been full swing since 1980, it originated with fears about Satanists in their childcare facilities, so the McMartin trial, which we will cover at some point. Before the Casso case, the religious right had only recently begun attributing Satanism and ritual abuse to rock music in Dungeons and Dragons. Mm-hmm. Now... Because you got that film, didn't you, like with Tom Hanks? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Have you seen that? Oh, yeah. It's great, isn't it? (laughs) Casso case gave the rocket fuel to allegations that heavy metal music was the gateway to hell, exerting mind control powers over helpless teens, brainwashing them into worshipping Satan and committing murder, even though it didn't. Now, the backlash of this was, particularly in the Bible Belt places and shit like that, it was severe. So heavy metal band t-shirts were banned in schools, Posters were ripped from teenagers' walls and burned, and cassettes and albums were destroyed. Which I never got, because you'd have to buy them. Yeah. So you'd give the band their money. Yeah, yeah. That's like subscribing to our Patreon to send me a message saying, you fucking suck. I'm like, yeah, but you'd give us your money. You'd give us your money. Yeah. Or like when people engage on the uh, comments and say stupid shit like, "Um, I don't understand what that means. Or they laughed at a horrible thing. It's like, you've literally just wasted your time and knocked us further up the algorithm. Thanks. Everyone comment so we can get it up the algorithm. But Casso's crime had a lasting effect on popular culture since committing them. There have been many fucking books written about him. There's been movies such as My Sweet Satan and Where Evil Dwells and such songs as Sonic Youth's Satan is Boring. Now, as we were talking about the um, Geraldo Rivera thing, it's fucking... You need to go and watch it, okay? Because it's on YouTube. It's just so one-sided, and it's just so fucking funny. And just watch it, because this is the kind of shit that... He's always like... um, All the way through it, he's like, "Um, Parents, now, if you do have children watching, please put them to bed now. This is not what they need to see. Like, fucking, this is going to be the worst thing ever. And it's just like... Ozzy's sitting in his TV studio in England like, I don't know what's going on. I haven't got a clue about all this stuff. Fucking knobhead. <laughs> but, you know, Satan's always been an easy scapegoat. No one wants to look at the fact that Casso... Well, he's kind of the original. Yeah. Well, you know, say he'd started doing serious drugs at an early age, which is a red flag for child abuse. Yeah. And also, no one seemed to acknowledge that his normal parents kicked out their mentally ill teenage son they didn't care that he was living in the woods on the friends in garages or his friends house they you know they didn't care i think there was a lot more going on with him but obviously yeah. we're never going to find out that was going on there but yeah that was ricky casso it's an interesting one just for how it impacted popular society yeah with it all but i mean it to be honest i think it's just a mentally ill kid who's fucking taking way too much acid and PCP and angel dust all at once. You get a lot of this though don't you and like that sort of time like between like the uh, 80s and the end of the 90s like there was that other guy wasn't there who was well into Vampire the Masquerade Oh yeah we're covering him by the way. Oh we? Yes. Oh I can't wait for that one because that's one I do know about. Yeah we're, go- we're going to cover a lot of these but yeah um, guys let us know what you think there. Do you reckon it was just like 
way too much acid and shit like that and trying to be a bit edgy and out there? Or do you think he was actually a Satan-worshipping, ritual-abusing, heavy metal worshipping Satanist mother? He wasn't, but, you know. We ever going to get on to the black metal murders? Yes, Les, we'll get oh. on. Wait. We'll get onto your shit Nazi bands. Don't you worry about it. You pointed but, that out the other day, didn't I you? I did, yeah. It's just like, you got a Burzum top, aren't you, Les? Like, yeah. Shut the fuck up. Right. Oh, you like Burzum? Tell me what other shit Nazi bands you like. But yeah, everybody, thank you for watching. Um, it's been a short, quite quick one, this one, hasn't it? Yeah. Hopefully got this one out quicker for you. But if you do like it, please like and leave a comment and share with all your friends and all over social media. It helps us out fucking immensely. While YouTube are bending us over and dry humping, dry fucking us, really. Sticking it up there dry with sandpaper on. But yes, um, if you do want to support us, you can do on Patreon. If you go to www.patreon.com forward slash enter the dark. We've got a range of all different kinds of tiers there. Help yourself out. Um, also, join us on the Discord. Uh, we just chat about shit and share memes. It's pretty fucking cool. If you want to get in touch with us, you can do on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or on email us on enterthedarkpodcast at gmail.com. All the names of our patrons are going up right now or been before. Buy our merch. Look in the mirror. Support us. We love you. I've been Jan. He's been Les. Hail Satan. Hail Satan.